After his first wife, Margarita, died in 1959, millionaire George Delacorte commissioned the Spanish sculptor Jose de Creeft to design a statue of Alice in Wonderland as a gift to the children of New York. Unlike other public art of the period, de Creeft's sculpture was deliberately made to be enjoyed by children in an interactive manner, opening a rabbit hole and acknowledging children in society and their right to explore and imagine. Based off John Tenniel's original illustrations from the first published edition of the book by Lewis Carroll, Alice in Wonderland's large-scale, ordered climbing surfaces and open position attract children to climb over and around Alice and her friends. The Alice in Wonderland monument was commissioned at a time in which children's opportunity to play was increasingly becoming neglected with New York City's preference to build up infrastructure and accommodate automobiles. The interactive features of the Alice in Wonderland monument function as an acknowledgement of children as citizens and in positioning them in history and the future. Soon after the park was opened in the 1860s, Central Park was criticized by local newspapers for its lack of facilities for children and their caregivers. The commissioners responded by creating a children's district in the southern part of the park, which included structures such as the dairy and the kinderberg. However, many of these structures of rustic architecture only help to satisfy adults' needs for a nice place to rest with their kids, rather than an area that actively engaged children. In 1952, private funds enabled the construction of the Chess and Checkers House, but nevertheless, the games offered in the house were made for sitting and thinking for long periods of time, rather than children's preference for activity and imagination. In addition to the attempts to get kids engaged in the park, there were also other tries to recognize children through monuments. In 1956, the Hans Christian Andersen statue was erected to commemorate the author's 150th birthday. Sculpted by George John Lober, this statue is meant to be climbed on just as Alice in Wonderland is. However, compared to Alice's monument that has multiple surfaces to climb and recognizable characters to play with, only Han Christian Andersen's lap and shoulders are accessible, and a small child would most likely not know his face. With these failing attempts and the increasing encroachment of buildings and roads on places to safely play, George Delacorte commissioned the Alice in Wonderland monument as an undefined recreation area for kids. The scale of the statue allows children to explore. The crevices between the mushroom stems are just large enough for a younger child's body to crawl through. Older children are able to climb the mushrooms to then explore the niches on the characters' bodies. The pyramid-like shape of this makeshift playground with the ascending levels acknowledges children's spot in the hierarchy of society, a position that makes them valuable citizens to the city. After Delacorte's physical assertion of children as proper residents of New York, more artistic acknowledgments to children began popping up not only in Central Park, but also the city. After the Alice in Wonderland sculpture, Delacorte commissioned a large clock to be placed on the brick arcaded bridge between the then Monkey House and the main Central Park Zoo. Each day between 8 in the morning and 6 in the evening, the clock plays one of 32 nursery rhyme tunes on the hour while whimsical bronze sculptures of animals rotate around a track welcoming kids to another place where they can be entertained and participate in their city. More recently, an American sculptor by the name of Tom Otterness was commissioned to create public artwork for the city subway in 2001. While the underlying political themes of these mini sculptures are enjoyed by adults, children can also appreciate the buffoonery of the character's circumstances. The Alice stories represent a different kind of heroism in which the leading character is not a muscular warrior or a mysterious god, but an ordinary little kid. The Alice in Wonderland monument is a dynamic site tied together with history, personal memory, and liberation. By making the statue not only a monument to kids, but also a playground, the children of New York have a designated location in which they are legitimately recognized, and Alice's arms are opened and welcoming to explore and imagine with her.